Greetings, I'm Travis, contributor to the Oravana project. I'm presently in virtual reality in Autodesk's Stingray engine. In this video, I'm going to give an overview of some of the most important models from the Oravana project's available design specifications, which I have placed on display boards in the rooms just over there. Here on the display board directly in front of me are the front covers of the project's four design specifications for a community type society, also known as a natural law resource-based economy. Every society is composed of the following four interrelated systems, a social system, a decision system, a lifestyle system, and a material system. Different types of societies have different internal compositions of these four systems. In other words, the internal composition of these systems determines the type of society you are dealing with. The type of society described by these four Oravana project specifications is a community type society. Summarily, these specifications represent the following. They are a unified model for human fulfillment. They are a socio-decisioning or more commonly socio-economic information system. They contain the logical reasoning for community, as well as a detailed description of the technical operation of community. And they are the specifications to be used in the construction, duplication, and operation of community. The social system specification describes the organized structuring of the social environment, the social structuring of community. A social system is a grouping of units of individuation forming a cooperative network in which information is shared and integrated through a structure. Essentially, the social system identifies our aligned interests and that which we have socially in common. It is an organizing system for social navigation that specifies a direction, orientation, and approach to our lives, to our socially coordinated experience. This specification details the purpose for the community's existence, a direction, its value system, an orientation, and its approach, a methodology and set of methods. Herein, these concepts, their relationships and understandings are defined and modeled. Discursive reasoning is provided for their selection, as opposed to the selection and encoding of other concepts, and their consequences are evidenced. The social system provides an initial description of who we are, why we are here, and where we are going. The decision system specification describes the formal structuring of decisions involving a comprehensive information space that resolves into a modification to the state dynamic of the material environment. In effect, the decision system is designed to structure and coordinate the flow of resources for global accessibility to all goods and services. A decision system is a collection of information processing components often involving humans and automation, that interact toward a common set of objectives. To navigate in common, we must also decide in common. Herein, we maintain a relationship to resources that focuses on access rather than possession, maximizing the advantages of sharing and incentivizing cooperative rather than competitive interest. All metrics relevant to human fulfillment and ecological well-being are factored into the allocation of resources, optimizing quality of life for all while ensuring the persistence of the commons. The system's decision processes produce tasks that are acted upon by an inter-system, also known as interdisciplinary, team involving the coordinated planning and operation of projects. Through this comprehensive and transparent decisioning process, we know precisely what needs to be accomplished to maintain fulfillment and ecological sustainability. Herein, through formalized decisioning and cooperation, we may continuously restructure community toward a higher potential dynamic of life experience for all. Note that the community's economic system is primarily encompassed by its decision system. An economic system is, at a higher level, a decision system. The lifestyle system specification describes the cycles to which we entrain that make up the daily motion of our lives. A lifestyle is how we spend our time. It is our pattern of living in the world as expressed by our activities, interests, and understandings. This specification provides a reasoned reflection on our way of life, how we live our values, and the ways in which we express our worldview. It logically derives and discursively argues for the life experience that we all have in common. We all participate in communities of practice. We all have interests and needs. We all contribute through our participation. We all seek self-integration and self-development. We are all active sometimes and inactive other times. We all discover and adapt through our experience. We all have routine patterns of behavior, and we all entrain to a cycle. Herein, learning is something we do through life experience and something which influences life experience. What would your life be like in community where goods and services are openly coordinated to be accessible without the need for any form of exchange? 
It is interesting to think about what a lifestyle might be like in a society oriented towards self-development and contribution and not stratified by age and the power positioning of oneself over others. The material system specification describes the structures, technologies, and other processes we construct around ourselves and into our material spatial environment, into our ecological habitat. The material system encodes and expresses our result decisions. When a decision resolves into action, that action is specified to occur in the material system. Here, our behavior influences the environment, and in turn, the environment influences our social behavior. The coherent integration and open visualization of the material system is important if our creations are to maintain the highest level of fulfillment for all individuals. This specification represents the encoding of our decisions into our environment forming our lifestyles around a unified habitat service system within which exists a network of integrated city systems. The visualization and simulation of our connected material integrations is essential for maintaining a set of complex material constructions designed to remain in alignment with the regeneration of our highest potential state of fulfillment. As such, the material system details what has been, what is, and what could be constructed from our information model into our environment. This specification depicts, through language and symbols, visualization and simulation, the material system. In other words, the network of integrated city systems. For anything that is to be constructed in the material system, there is a written part, a drawing part, and a simulation part, which is also how the material system specification itself is divided. Now, each of these spaces in front of me represents a specification. Here are models from the social system specification, this area contains models from the decision system, and the area over there contains one model from the lifestyle system specification, one from the material system, and another model representing an overview of the whole system. But first, we have a set of models providing an overview of the social system. This is the first model you come to in the social system specification, the social organizational model, which visualizes the relationships between the primary organizing conceptual understandings that lead to the formation of the proposed community. This model presents a top-level view of the social organization of the social system. It shows a community arising out of the similar organization and elucidation of four primary concepts, needs, purpose and goals, values and approach, each of these concepts is a principally influential aspect affecting human behavior and social arrangements. The model is a conceptual framework that reflects, supports, and guides the emergent design and participative development of the community. The community itself is symbolized by the green emergent circle seen here as an ellipses within the larger encompassing blue circle. Within the community, a greater subtlety of dynamic organization and refinement of information exists, and this is symbolized by the six triangular slices representing the community's habitat systems, which are detailed in the decision system specification. This model, which contains similar information to the prior, depicts the social structuring of the community in the form of a triality of awarenesses. At a high level, this community may be differentiated into these three awarenesses or experience patterns, which are each subdivided into three additional conceptual awarenesses. Here, at the top, we have a set of concepts representing direction, that of purpose, needs, and goals. Next, we have a set of concepts representing orientation, or our values, the core of which are freedom, justice, and efficiency. Of course, in modern society, these are often fairly ambiguous terms, but in the design specifications, we detail precisely what they mean in the context of community. And finally, we have a set of concepts representing our approach, that of the systems methodology, as well as the analytical and critical methods. Together, these information sets structure the whole social patterning of the community. The directional orientation model here represents the relational arrangement of components that direct and orient an individual's social actions toward different desirable states of the mental and physical world. It is a basic social tool for thinking accurately, acting morally, and deciding strategically. The upward arrow in the model represents an individual's or community's ultimate direction of intention, our life vector. Herein, the vector direction is subcomposed of three concepts, needs, purpose, and goals. Humans have needs that ultimately motivate and determine their direction toward particular internal and external states of the world. When needs are recognized and at least basic and psychosocial needs are sufficiently fulfilled, then a higher potential direction is likely to become visible. Whereas needs direct, values orient, 
Values determine someone's orientation and exist to meet needs by coordinating decisive action using information derived from a methodical approach. An orientation in turn determines alignment, more greatly aligned with a desired direction or less in alignment with that direction. Next to this model, we have the same model, but in this case, it includes the visual element of iteration. At the top, we have the currently encoded social information space, and then below it, we have past iterations of that space. This model right here is similar to the directional orientation model, but presents the information in a slightly different way. Here, information is acquired and processed through a methodical, value-oriented approach, which leads to greater or lesser states of total information coherency. The accuracy of the information in its processing will lead to an overall increase or decrease in the entropy of the total information system. Each unit in this circular ribbon around the column represents a single value in our value system. Incoming information is processed through an approach in the context of each value before being integrated into a core information space. The processing and integration of information through our value set can lead us toward greater states of fulfillment and understanding, and hence a lower state of entropy, or it can lead us toward lower states of fulfillment, less understanding, and hence a higher state of entropy. And here is a three-dimensional representation of the model. Here in the center, we have the units of entropic direction, leading to lower entropy and more illumination here at the top, and higher entropy, in other words, less order, more randomness, greater chaos, and lower illumination here at the bottom. Here are the units of value, each unit representing one value in a value system, and here are the units of process, where our approach integrates new and or fed back information through our value set into our core information system space, again, leading to greater and lesser states of fulfillment. The motive for action model represents humankind's innate and universal motives for action, their common needs and states of being. It is a model of the forces that motivate, liberate, and direct a human life, as they are presently known, toward a higher potential of self-expression and human fulfillment. This model assumes that all humans, regardless of culture and socioeconomic conditions, are driven by the same fundamental needs, the same motive forces. The model exists as a guide for the informed creation of a fulfilled society. By understanding what our needs are and the different ways they can be fulfilled or prevented from being fulfilled, we can create an intentional environment where we cooperate toward the fulfillment of all of our needs. The motive for action model combines multiple different isolated needs-based models into a single integrated needs continuum model. From left to right, the model includes the following eight sub-models. The consciousness as a level of care model, the power versus force model, a modified version of the spiral dynamics model, Tony Robbins' human needs model, Maslow's eight human needs model, Daniel Pink's creative motivation model, a physical resource needs model, and a technological needs model. Each of these sub-models categorically organizes a different factorial component of the human life and learning system, extending from the subtle as consciousness and mind on the left of the model, to the material as physical resources and technology on the right side of the model. In other words, the motive for action model represents a common spectrum of human need, extending from consciousness left to the dense material right. When combined, these models suggest that humans have needs that extend from the subtle or mental through to the material, and there exists a set of human needs in each system. At the model's far right, the spectrum may be seen interconnecting with the community's operational processes elaborated upon in the decision system specification. I'm not going to go over each of the specific submodels here, but they are detailed in the social system specification. Moving from needs to values, in this community-type social system, we have a set of core values as well as a set of encompassing stabilizing values. The core values are freedom, justice, and efficiency. And the stabilizing values are health and vitality, appreciation and compassion, autonomy and purpose, cooperation and sharing, learning and integration, sustainability and abundance, as well as openness and sharing. Essentially, this is a visual representation of the structure of the value system with the three core values within a spiraling organization of seven stabilizing sets of values. Next, we have an artistic value circumplex model, showing the differentiation of values between three different paradigmatic centers of focus, the individual, representing the concept me, an isolated social group, the concept us, and the whole social group, the concept all of us, or each of us. 
These aren't all the values in the social system, but this is a good model in showing the difference between community type values and the values held by other types of social structuring. Now, remember the social system is, to a large extent, a navigational system. And just like in any navigational system, there may exist the idea of a coordinate. Together, the values in the social system specification, both core and stabilizing, form a value system coordinate for a stable fulfillment orientation. So this model is a value system coordinate, which details the different values and the potential forms of stability that their intelligent and accurate composition is likely to create. Over here, we have an overview model of the social approach. Essentially, this is an approach that describes the ways in which we think about the world and the problems we encounter while we are acting within it. The systems methodology is the principal conceptual filter through which we perceive, conceive, and process reality. Now, there is an important distinction here. A methodology is not the same as a method. A methodology refers to the study and logical selection of a method or methods. So the methods being selected here in our approach are all systems-based. On the left, we have the method of critical thinking, or the critical method. On the right, we have the method or methods of science. And above, we have the systems design engineering method, which, in common parlance, goes by a multitude of different names. Next, we have an artistic representation of the community's approach, which is composed of systematic structuring, analytical processing, and scientific discovery, all encompassed by this outer circle representing our intention. And then the inner geometry here representing our integrations achieving some sort of greater alignment with the nature of our highest potential form of fulfillment. Each of the petals of this geometry are colored, and there is an aphorism for each. For the systematic nature of our approach, it says, for water, everything is fluid like mind. For the analytic component, it says, for fire, everything is transformative exchange. And for the scientific component, it says, for Earth, everything is openly discoverable. Here, we have a brief conceptual description of the Oravana Project's logo, which is detailed at the end of the social system specification. This is meant to represent a spiraling whole information model, the outer circle representing universal wholeness, the three circles here representing triality required for state change, a triangle is the first formable structure. These three blue elements here represent the division of function, the three sub-aspects of each of the three primary elements of the social system, that being direction, orientation, and approach. The central circle represents a direction of greater fulfillment and ecological sustainability. The emerging circle seen here as an ellipses represents the continuous emergence of community. And the hexagonal structure out here represents the community's habitat service system. And then the blurred circles in the logo represent our star, planet, and species, among the numerous other likely species out in the universe. And if you are interested in the name of the project, Oravana, we have the reasoning for that on the FAQ page of our website. Now let's move on to models from the decision system specification. Here is one of the most important models for a community type socio-decisioning system. This is the real-world community information model. It is a high-level model describing the organization of a real-world community. The model represents a formal map by which the community structures information and arrives at important decisions that involve the systems and resources of which the community is composed. It is an information systems model. It visualizes what information sets the community is composed of and describes how the community is composed in terms of its high-level relationships. The model represents a common point of focus for community, as well as a structured systems approach for accurately engaging with the real world. Simply put, this model describes how information is organized and processed by the community. In part, this model is organized into domains. Here at the top, we have the purpose domain, the purpose for the community's existence in the real world. Here we have the data domain as that which we may commonly experience occurring. Data becomes knowledge, and knowledge influences our value set. All this cognitive social information is input into our economic decision system, involving a formalized decision model, which resolves into a decisive action to the state of our habitat, seen here. Our habitat system includes our habitat service systems and the larger natural environment. Here is the current known state of our habitat system, and these circles over here represent past states of our habitat service system. After a change has occurred, we receive feedback, which becomes new data, and the cycle continues. Hence, this is a spiraling information model. 
There is a degree of greater complexity to this model, but you can read about that in the decision system specification. Fundamentally, we can change our experience here on the planet by changing our information space and correctly interpreting environmental signals through a unified information system. Next, we have the Habitat Service System Layered Reference Model. The Habitat Service System is an integrated system for servicing the fulfillment of the material needs, wants, and preferences of individuals in the community. The Habitat Service System is principally divided into four service subsystems. These systems are connected to one another within the larger and more encompassing real-world community information model. Here, in their layered portrayal, they are seen with the decision system at the center running through each of their layers. Each service system functions to fulfill a particular category of need in a temporal and spatial manner. The four service systems are, at the top here we have our planet, the resource production, regeneration, and storage system, which provides for the community's resource needs. It is our natural, phenomenological environment, our life ground. Strategic preservation of the life ground is a requirement for the continuation of all other service support systems. Second from the top, we have the community's life support system, similar in concept to the life support system of a spaceship. It provides for the community's life support needs. Next, we have the technology support service system, which provides for the community's technology support needs. And last, we have the facility support system, which provides communities non-essential social and recreational needs. Now, each of these primary systems has a number of different subsystems, the life support system is subcomposed of material architecture, biological nutrition, energy and power, water, recycling and waste management, and medical and life form restoration. The technology service support system has four subsystems, the information system, communication system, manufacturing system, and transportation distribution system. The facility system is subcomposed of the recreational system, art and music system, science and research system, technology development system, consciousness system, and learning system. This model also makes note of an operational urgency spectrum. Here, for life support, you can see the following five operational processes. Emergency, critical, recovery, maintenance, and strategic. The same five for the technology support system, and then we have maintenance, strategic, and discretionary for the facility system. It is important to make two additional points here. This model directly relates to the material system specification, which isn't yet complete. So eventually the names of some of these systems and their positions may in fact change, though this is a solid start to the model. Also, this model can be viewed from a variety of different perspectives. This is just one of its representations. Here is the real world decision resolution model. It is a more focused in view of a section of the real world community information model. Here you have data, knowledge, and values being fed into the decision space. In the decision space, you have various inquiry and integration tasks within an urgency triage and their associated operational processes. Here you have the state of the current transport configuration of resources in the system, which are known to be generating these services, technologies, and behaviors. In the center, you have the mention of feedback and the instantiation of issues that generate the decision space. This model details a decision space. A decision is a conceptual space within which one of two or more feasible alternatives is selected, denoting a process of deciding. All decisions are decided upon within a decision environment, or decision space, which is defined as the collection of information alternatives, tools, and deciding factors such as goals and values available at the time of the decision. A decision environment is bound by these elements. Here we have a question and a set of objectives with attributes. We have a decision mechanism, a set of external constraints, and a view of different alternatives with differing probable consequences. Through logical information processing, these bounds are resolved into a selected final decision. You see, our lives are an exploration of choice, and when we make, take, or otherwise arrive at a choice, we set in motion a probable pattern of consequences, as seen on the right here as a probability space. Now, feedback isn't shown in this model, but the resolution of the space leads to changes in ourselves and our environment, and that information is fed back into the decision space of the next decision. By clearly visualizing our information space, we can come to a greater understanding of what is actually happening, and then from that attentional process, we can take the optimal decision. 
Here you have the economic decision processing model. At a high level, this decision model involves multiple processes of inquiry and constraint around an economic issue for the purpose of acquiring and processing sufficient information to arrive at an optimal decision. This decision model essentially represents a formalized, inquiry-based structure that designs and integrates into our community system solutions to technical economic problems identified by individuals and systems in the community. First you have the articulation of an issue, then you have its recognition and the initiation of something known as effectiveness inquiry, which is essentially a safety inquiry for the community. Then the issue enters the value alignment and solution inquiry space. Here, solutions are developed which are passed through these various inquiry processes. When all inquiry processes are given a green light, then an optimal solution is selected, which leads to a change in the material and or social environment. And this is the same model, but visualized from another perspective. Here, an issue is articulated, then recognized, then it enters the technical solution inquiry space where a solution or solutions are designed and analyzed by a set of inquiry processes. This effectiveness inquiry here takes issues and their solutions that are likely to impact the safety and stability of the community out of the solution space and puts them into issue holding. Here you have imagery representing both past solutions and a set of solutions that reside on an optimality spectrum. Now, the decision system for the community has four characteristics. I don't have a model showing that here, but regardless, it has four characteristics. Firstly, it is a systems-based decision system. It is also an access-based system because it accounts for access, a resource-based system because it accounts for resources, as well as a participatory-based system. Hence, it is technically incorrect to describe the whole community system itself as a resource-based economy. Now, the term resource-based economy or natural law resource-based economy is more widely known, but the resource-based characteristic is only one of the four characteristics of just the decision system. There are three other primary systems, social, lifestyle, and material, that compose the whole community system, which aren't accounted for or even recognized by the usage of the term resource-based economy. And in any case, an economy is a subconception of the total decision system of any given society. So this is generally why when I refer to the whole system, I use the term community type society, because any given society is composed of the four aforementioned systems, social decision, lifestyle, and material. We aren't just talking about an economic system. And when we label the whole system under the category economics, we miss out on a truly comprehensive design solution. This isn't just a case of semantics. The language we use can mask our perception of viable solutions. So I don't generally use the term natural law resource-based economy, though the term essentially refers to the exact same thing that these specifications are describing. All right, moving on. Here we have a model representing a basic conception of the community's global access system. At the top, humankind has a set of needs that are met by accessing resources from the natural environment. Those resources are surveyed and enter a resource management system, which involves their tracking. Through the production management system, those resources are transformed into needed goods and services. Those goods and services are then demanded, which isn't meant to be a pejorative here, and distributed to humankind. In smaller text here, we have a mention of some of the protocols and strategies applied therein. To the right is a model of the traceability of resources and services throughout the community system via coordinated access designation. Here, systems access refers to highly coordinated inter-system access to ensure the continued functioning of operational service systems for common and personal access by everyone in the community. Simply, common or community access is shared access, and personal access refers to access by an individual or close-knit group of individuals. Again, there is a lot more complexity behind this, but simply put, people working on some aspect of the Habitat service system are part of an inter-system team, and they access resources and services through systems access. Common services, access spaces, and library type objects are designated by community or common access. So common access refers to the short-term usage sharing of goods and services among the population of the community. And personal access or personal use is easily understood as those items or services that are occupied by an individual or family for the duration of their lifespan or until they are no longer used or required. Personal access could to some degree be seen as a sub-designation of community access, such as when you have scheduled the usage of a tennis court, for example. But that is more akin to common access, which is being scheduled for usage. 
For instance, your dwelling or home is personal access to which you control access by others. In terms of the tennis court, you don't control access to the tennis court. Instead, you schedule your short-term usage of it. Similarly, hygiene items and your smartphone would be considered personal access. There is nuance to this, but most of that is pretty well clarified in the decision system specification. Here we have the service design usage model. This model depicts the usage or occupation of resources by a community of users. In the center, we have the idea that resources are common to all of us. To the right, the first layer out, color pink, is the service design layer. And the second layer is the manufacturing and production layer, colored blue. In community, we design for access given what we know. There are three principal access types, systems access, community access, and personal access. These types exist in contrast to access in modern society, which is governed by private and public property. Systems access describes access only by inter-system team members. Community or common access describes that which is accessible to everyone in the community. And personal access describes that which is accessible to only you personally. When resources enter into systems access service, they become used for operations and maintenance, system modernization, and system migration, seen here in orange. Here, services are distributed to the community and become an inventory for personal and community access. While resources are in operation, there exists a replacement failure cycle that is primarily handled by operations and maintenance processes. The systems modernization process concerns the integration of a new system. Here migration is also a possibility. Resources and systems will eventually need to be disassembled and recovered as they become obsolete. And eventually the resources will be recycled or decomposed. At a fundamental level, it is from nature that we build our service constructions. And finally, although the decision system contains many more models essential for a comprehensive understanding, here we have an artistic representation of the inter-system project coordinating team structure. Here in the center, you have a helix spiral representing the encoded construction of our habitat service system by inter-system team members. These are meant to be petals of a flower. This is the orthographic top view, and down here we have an orthographic side view. Each of these petals represents an inter-system team from the top up here and from the side down here. In the center of each petal, of which there are three layers extending outward, you have the two primary operational processes, operations and maintenance. The circles around the central circles are meant to represent inter-system sub-teams with a set of operational processes. Here in the center, you have strategic preservation planning and information flows leading to a structure with the potential of facilitating the fulfillment of everyone in the community. Now let's move to the final area in this arrangement. The lifestyle system doesn't contain many models, and this is one of its most significant. Though we acknowledge our biological daily circadian rhythms are one of the most fundamental cycles, Certainly chronobiology, light interacting with our sensory system, turns on and off various processes, is essential to pay attention to, but is not the only one, especially in terms of our larger lifestyle. What you see here in front of me are the four different phases of what has become commonly known as the flow cycle. Among community, we seek a lifestyle that increases the amount of flow in our daily lives. We recognize that the people with the most flow in their lives score off the charts for life fulfillment and well-being. Hence, the community is designed in an intentional and informed manner to sustainably increase the amount of flow in our lives. Flow states are defined technically as optimal states of consciousness where we feel and perform our best. It is important to note, however, that although the flow cycle is a four-stage process, not all of the stages of the cycle feel flowy. On the right and left of the model, we have the four phases of the cycle, each with an accompanying image symbolic of that phase of the cycle. The four phases of the repeating cycle are our struggle or struggling, release, relax, flow, and recovery. Under the name of each phase, there are some associated concepts. And here in the center is a description of activities associated with that phase of the cycle. Struggling refers to challenging yourself and or overloading your brain with information. For example, struggling could include practicing or learning a new skill, experiencing a new context, working on the front end of a problem, or exercising. 
Release refers to activities associated with the relaxation response, such as walking, chatting, reading, doing something relaxing, some forms of entertainment. Essentially, you're taking your mind off the struggle. Flow, the next phase of the cycle, and the phase the cycle is named after, as just mentioned, flow is the experience of being in the moment, in an activity where connections and relationships are streaming into consciousness and work becomes nearly effortless. We can move into flow for any activity. And finally, recovery, to meet the demands of growth and adaptation. Flow is a physiologically taxing state where our brain releases the most potent neurochemical set we have access to. And hence, recovery is absolutely essential. Sleep and certain deep states of meditation are the two primary recovery activities. Summarily, we can use neuroscience and the wisdom of our ancestors to guide our daily activities toward excellence and the optimization of each phase of every cycle that is important or otherwise essential for us. Here we have a series of artistic drawings or blueprints of different configurations of a circular integrated city system. Generally speaking, at the level of the material architecture of a human community with a sufficiently large population and access to digital information technology are circularly configured walking garden cities. These cities are designed in an integrated manner and hence they are often referred to as integrated city systems or total city systems. The proposed circular configuration of many of these cities and community is not just a stylized architectural conception. It is the result of reasoning and evidence into providing an environment that can best serve the needs of the inhabitants and conserve resources. The circular arrangement effectively permits the most sophisticated use of available resources and construction techniques with minimum expenditure of energy. The efficiency of the circular design allows us to make available to all people the most advanced amenities that our knowledge and energy can provide. On the bottom right, we have a concentric type circular city, and here on the top left, we have an example of an overlapping type circular city. These city configurations contain the same circular rings or belts as the city I am presently in, here in virtual reality. The only difference is the layout of the city and the architecture on the inter-system operations belt. Most cities in community, I imagine, will have the same or similar core functional rings, like the central area, recreation belt, inter-system operations belt, dwelling belt, and circular symbiotic farming belt. But some cities may not have any low-density dwellings and may only have one or more high-density dwelling belts, and others may not have any high-density dwelling belts, they may only have low-density dwellings. And finally here, we have a combined model representing an integrated overview of the community system. This is just a very preliminary model that I've quickly thrown together. In the middle, we have the real world community information model and overlaid on top of it, we have a helix representing the information system being actively encoded into our lives. Down here on the right, we have the first model in the social system in grayscale. Above that, we have two models representing the coordination of access. Above that, we have a model describing the construction of tools. Above that, we have a model of the community's decision resolution space as a tool. Down here on the left, we have another representation of the triality nature of the social organization of the system. Above that, we have the community's information system subcategories. You will probably have a difficult time reading the text here, but all of the models are available in the system specifications. Above that, we have another perspective view of the habitat service system. Here we have a symbol representing threshold inside an inquiry process leading to a green go or red no go decision on a given decision resolution. Above that, we have a representation of the constructor theory model described in the lifestyle system specification. And above that, we have the flow cycle. Over here, we have an artistic representation of a resolving decision space. Above that, we have the inter-system habitat service team structure in top-down and then side view. Next, we have the inter-system team creating and encoding into material existence a circular integrated city system, which then becomes a network of integrated city systems through which we share equal access to all that humanity and the universe we live in has to offer. Now, I mentioned earlier that the economic decision system of a community type society or natural law resource-based economy has four primary characteristics. It's systems-based, access-based, resource-based, and participatory-based. This type of society and its accompanying economic system, described by the models here, is both marketless and moneyless, in that there is no market and no money. 
In place of money as a mediator of resource transaction, a community-type society involves at least the following. First, a perception of the world's resources as the common heritage of everyone. Second, global open source cooperative design and tasking. And third, a unified information space oriented toward human fulfillment and ecological sustainability. In other words, we use logical information processing within a unified information space to cooperatively organize our thinking and environment for the fulfillment of each and every one of us. Tangentially, when people hear the word economics, their eyes often glaze over, but the concept is very easy to understand. Economics is simply the acquisition and transformation of resources into a life cycle of needed goods and services. Now, the idea that a marketless, moneyless economic system could exist for our planetary population is simplex in nature. In other words, it is simple from one perspective, but there is also a great deal of complexity behind it. While it may be simple to understand that a moneyless society could emerge from a simple set of conditions, including but not limited to, one, viewing the planet's resources as the common heritage of everyone, two, having a complete inventory of all resources, three, designing optimized systems with the greatest efficiency and greatest effectiveness toward human fulfillment and ecological sustainability, and four, cooperatively designing and open sourcing the construction of systems within a unified information space, it must, however, also be acknowledged that there is significant complexity behind any such operation. And the models here in this central space in this circular city reveal some of that complexity, though certainly not all of it. In essence, the goal of what I have been describing here is to create a network of primarily circular, integrated cities that operate together under a unified societal information system for global human fulfillment and ecological sustainability. I would like to leave you with the idea that it is possible to develop what we envision sooner than we may think when we work together constructively. You have access to the project's design specifications, including everything you see here through our website, auravana.com. That's A-U-R-A-V-A-N-A.com.